Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health, and I am here with Kathleen Elmore. She is the Managing Director of Engages. And so I understand you're a bit of an expert in the consumer health space. So tell us, what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong? Great question. So when I look around, there's so many fantastic technologies. You know, there's all kinds of great data in a lot of companies. But unless we can gauge the consumer, all of it's for naught, right? So you can have all the best technologies, but if you build it, they don't always come. And so thinking about how to engage consumers on their health, um, really there's a lot to be learned from outside of healthcare. People talk about the Googles and the Amazons. I've actually, you know, been in consumerism all my life. I started at companies like Procter & Gamble and General Mills. And I'd like to say that, like, when I was at Betty Crocker, I would have killed for this much data on my consumers. I think we have such an opportunity in health to even do more than we're doing about using these methodologies that have worked to get you to eat Snickers when you're not hungry or buy things you can't afford to get you to get the colonoscopies, to get, fill your meds, all those things that are so critical. How do you do that? Because really, I mean, it's much easier to convince this girl to eat a Snickers bar when she's not hungry <laughs> than it is to go and get a colonoscopy. That, that's the, How do you do that? Absolutely. So in health, it's personal. Like I had the luxury when I was at, Ch at Cheerios of having a very slice, um, a tiny slice of a market. So I had affluent moms with new babies. And so I knew right away there's two things that motivate them. One is, you know, a good first food for their baby, or they might have husbands with bad cholesterol. Those are my two messages. In health, we're at a disadvantage that we have all walks of life, all race, socioeconomic status, education, you name it. And then add to that a whole nother class of data called health status. And so how do you get to those silver bullets? You don't. It becomes becomes super personal. And so having those technologies that allow you to really start those one-on-one, -on -one, you know, interactions is critical. But then knowing the questions to ask with consumers. So for instance, um, barriers. Barriers are what gets in the way of, of taking these health actions. We found over 250,000 barrier studies that they don't fall along demographic lines. They're very personal. And so if you say, hey, I don't have time to go fill that med, and I say, but it's free, that does nothing for you. I need to be able to say to you what's important to you to overcome that barrier. And we find consistently when we do these barrier breaking messages, we turned 30% of no's into yeses consistently for colonoscopies, med adherence, well visits as you name it. So it's getting really personal that's going to crack the code. Okay, so basically, uh, let me just say this back to you, make sure I've got it right. Yeah. So you're looking at the data in a different way in the sense of like almost like psychographics and things like that as opposed to demographics. So you're not going along like age and race and things like that necessarily. You're looking instead at what is the reason why they're not doing this? Or what is the reason they are doing this? Or what kinds of things matter to them? Is that right? Absolutely. We call it, it, it there's a golden rule from the consumer world that there's three types of data, behavioral, demographic, and attitudinal. And there's this golden rule that behavioral data is five times more predictive than demographics, which is then five times more predictive than attitudes. Basically, what consumers do is so much more powerful than what they say. And we see that over and over again. If I can tell you a fun story from my- Yes. Okay, good. So when I used to work in television- We love fun stories. Okay, good. We asked um, men, 25 to 54, what was their most watched television channel. Not favorite, most watched. We got back from the surveys, statistically significant, CNN and History Channel. When we took the Nielsen meters, those are set-top boxes that measure actual behavior out of the homes, turns out what they were watching was ESPN and TNT Wrestling. Why the bias? Well, we figured either they're trying to sound smart, they were trying to possibly save little watch channels, or maybe the time spent on History Channel was so painful it felt like twice the time spent on <laughs> ESPN and TNT. So what we know is that behavioral data is king, and the great thing about healthcare is we have a ton of it. So to mine it and to use it to drive better health, it, the opportunities are endless. How do we do that? Like, what is your? What are some tips? Sure. So um, I always say uh, what's not used enough in healthcare is test and learn, A/B testing, champion challenge, whatever you want to call it. I've heard so, that before. So find those um, opportunities to start testing because, again, uh, when I was in the consumer world, really a lot of the lessons have been learned. I knew if, if I, you know, tilted a stamp or threw coffee in the envelope, I'd, I'd open my open rate would, you know, go up a little bit. Because health is so fragmented, there's so many things we need them to do that cross so many different types of people that all these silver bullets are still in the making. And so this crowd here and all the folks that are key stakeholders, we're lifting that information knowledge every day as we go through um, our programs. And so I challenge people just every single time do an A-B test and what you find out 
make it part of your Bible and then learn from go from there. So give us a grade. So I mean like we've got a lot of companies that are doing lots of things with AI, doing lots of things with natural language processing to get even more data to throw into the mix and we're yes. getting all of this data. Are we doing a good job at getting those meaningful, um, the meaningful analytics out of it that can help? Well so more isn't always better, right? It's finding the right types right. of data. Um, I think we're getting there. I think that what I see for 2018 and early 2019 is this push around um, infrastructure. So we've, we've done a great job of thinking about the front lines, but now we have to actually come back and make it a reality, get rid of the legacy infrastructures, set up the right governance models, create new processes that can really um, pull the stakeholders in, providers with plans, with consumers, and start to be able to kind of have all the stakeholders on those same ecosystems so that we can really move behavior. There's a lot of talk right now, especially on the consumerization of healthcare right, and and the patients, the patients' right to their data. And not only their right to their data, but now it's like going even a step further they're like, hey, you want to use my data, you got to cut me in. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on this? I love it. Uh, you know, engage the consumers however they can be engaged. And if someone wants to be paid for their data, I think that's a great way to start getting them more involved in the health system. Now, I don't know that um, we're going to be anywhere near that in, this, in the short-term future, but I think that the, the tide is coming. And so getting consumers involved in different ways, including in their data, is going to be critical for them to be empowered in their health. And I understand with Engages, you guys do a lot of consulting in this space in terms of helping different healthcare organizations engage with their consumers better. So give us a success story so we can we have something to model ourselves sure. after. Yeah, so we set up um, a rapid experimentation A-B testing pods for our large plan to help them figure out how to close gaps better. This is a to, pet health plan? Health plan, okay. yep. How to um, you know get your well visit uh, you know when we ask you to, all those types of things. And we're still in the process. What have of you learned? Uncovering silver bullets. Oh, gosh. What's um, the coolest thing you learned? The coolest thing, is, well, there's so many. So, you know, again, thinking about those nuggets, a lot of times you think cost is the barrier. In many, many cases, cost is not the barrier. It's just lack of time, or I didn't know, or the doctor didn't tell me. And so, again, finding ways to overcome that really immediately transform the differences, and it's, it's exciting to see. You know. Kathleen, thank you so much for stopping by. It's so it's so interesting to pick your brain about this, especially somebody who comes from a consumer back like a real consumer goods background. Like it's so good. Like yes, eating more Snickers is much more palatable <laughs> than than trying to figure out how to get a an OGYN well visit appointment exactly. scheduled. Boo. Yep. All right. Well thank you so much for your thank insight. You so we hope much. other people oh, use this for us. Thank you. Thank you. This is Jessica DeMassa here at Health 2.0 for WTF Health. Thank you.